Are you financially healthy? I got eight tips coming up. Stick with me. So I'm talking about financial health today because I was reading this article in the newspaper which was talking about some, some research from the Harvard Business School. And so what this research showed was that people who were financially literate and financially educated, people who were, were given finance courses in high school, college, and university, those people showed no correlation or any improvement into their financial health compared to the people that didn't take those financial courses. And I thought that was very interesting. The difference between you being financially literate and financially healthy is actually action. So they give you eight tips, which I'm going to talk about and give my own opinions on. They give you eight tips on how to become financially healthy. Now this, this isn't to you know make you rich or make you wealthy like I talk about in some of my other videos. This is for you to become like, put yourself in a very comfortable financial space compared to how you are now, which might be paycheck to paycheck, or maybe you are unemployed or, or something like that. So we're going to start off with tip number one, and this one seems super simple, but it's one of the uh, biggest faults of the middle of a middle class American or even a poor American or, or poor Canadian, whatever, poor person, middle class person, doesn't matter what country you're from. So this is, uh, it's really obvious, spend less than you earn. So it was a very simple tip that they gave, but I think that there's an example how um, there's a substantial portion of the population that, you know, I think the average in personal income is about $34,000, $35,000, yet they'll spend about $38,000 or $40,000 using credit cards or loans, stuff like that. And so that just sets you back. You aren't saving. Uh, you're making yourself more poor every single year. And a lot, of the t a lot of these times, the credit is spent on stuff which you don't really need, like, um, like a super expensive car or too much of a house or on, on consumer goods or anything like that. And this tip that they gave actually reminded me of one of my foundational um, financial mindset pieces, which is, um, it's, I talked about this in only one of my videos. I should make an entire video on it, but it's called the daily profit. Meaning that for the average employee, I'm no, I know most people are employed. My situation's a little bit different because I'm self-employed, but I'm going to take this for an employee, which is most people watching. So whatever you make in a month, uh, let's just say it's $3,000. What you should do is divide that by 30 because on average 30 days in a month. So you're making about what? $100 a day roughly, uh, ignoring work days, just $100 a day on average you make. And so I have this rule where add up all your expenses, taxes, add it all up. And what you should do is never spend more than $100 a day on average. Now, I know that there's some other stuff. There's some monthly expenses like rent, but you're going to have to take that into account. Break down your rent into a daily expense. And so I always make sure that I make a profit every single day. Now, it's a little bit different for me when I'm running business. I get paid you know, five days a week, essentially three to five, just sometimes seven days a week. So it's a little bit different for me. So if I don't bring in any money, I really don't spend anything which is unless I really need to, um, you know, if I need food or something like that, but I, I never go out and buy any sort of investment or buy any sort of consumer good. I don't buy a lot of those in the first place, but I never buy anything unless I make some money that day, make more money than I spend. So that's something you should take uh, into account, the daily profit. That'll help you become financially healthy, according to this article. Number two, this is again, it's, there's some really good tips on here and just I get really mad when people ignore them. So pay your bills on time. And I'm going to add on to this. That's what they said. I'm going to say pay your bills in full on time. Because people think that it's wise to pay the minimum on their credit cards. And that sets people back. That sets people back. The interest starts to add up and you start paying a lot more for that you know, $100 shirt or $100 shirt. If you're buying a $100 shirt, uh, you deserve to be poor. Um, like that's, if you're making, buying $100 shirts, buy $30 shirts, buy $20 shirts, buy $10 shirts. Go and get free shirts. I get hand-me-downs all the time. Go ask your big brother or sister. <laughs> but we're, but we're going to get back to this here. So pay your bills on time because late fees add up if you don't pay stuff on time and interest adds up if it's on stuff like credit cards or any sort of loan. Pay everything um, full and on time. And yeah, so just so that those late fees and interest don't add up, it, that one's really simple. I won't talk about that too much, but for those people that don't do that and think it's like smart to not pay everything in full, 
it, that's just really frustrating. So we're going to move on to number three. But hey, it's good for me. I mean, I do it, so I get ahead of everyone. Number three. Oh, and I think I'm running out here of marker. But we're going to keep going here. Emergency fund. Very, very important. This uh, is what will prevent you from having to take out a loan for a lot of people. So whatever your emergency fund is, uh, I think that Dave Ramsey recommends three months of your expenses. Three months of your living expenses should be what you have as an emergency fund at all times. Not what you have in your checking account to pay rent next month, but this is in a separate account or maybe you just have it in your checking account, but it's on top of what you have to pay rent and living expenses. So make sure you have three months living expenses in there. That's typically anywhere from, you know, a couple thousand dollars to if you have a family, maybe it's it's $10,000 or $15,000. Just make sure you have an emergency fund. Um, yeah, it could be for medical bills, could be you lose your job. There's lots of scenarios. Maybe your house, something happens with your house, something happens with your car. It's really important to, to have an emergency fund for any of those scenarios. I mean, for me, it was medical stuff. I mean, I, I think I've told this story about how, you know, when I got sick, I had, I don't even know how much I had, between five and $10,000 in the bank in university. And a large portion of that was, was savings, just extra money, which I didn't really use. And so I used that money because I got sick. I had to stop working. I couldn't bring in any more income and I had to pay for, for drugs and I had to pay for living expenses and I couldn't work. And that, seriously, that's what got me through for pretty much six months. So I, can, I cannot stress that enough. And I was 20 something years old at the 21 years old at the time. So it can happen to anyone. So make sure you have an emergency fund at all times. Number four, to make you financially healthy, is, oh yeah. So this is, again, just for the average person. Save for retirement. Start saving young. You know, I've mentioned before about how I've talked to a lot of older people that don't have any sort of assets. They have, their net worth is under $100,000. They don't own their home. Their home. They don't really have much in investing or saving because they, they were spending their money. They were making $40,000 a year, they were spending $40,000 a year and not investing it. So super important, save for retirement. Now, what I like to say is that if you have enough investments um, and, and have a successful business or a lot of assets, you don't really need to think about a retirement account. Um, you just, maybe you can use it to you know, uh, delay your taxes and stuff, that's what it could be for. But for me, I mean, I'm probably not gonna really have to think about putting stuff into in Canada's um, version of a 401k, which is an RRSP. But yeah, for the average person, just save for retirement, and that'll make you a little bit uh, more financially healthy, especially uh, you'll thank yourself when you're 60 years old and your back hurts and don't want to work anymore. Number five, we're going to go to, oh yeah. So this one is sustainable debt. So what is sustainable debt? What do I mean by that? Well, this one's it's kind of simple. So uh, it's written up here. All debt should be less than 36% of your income. So the, this is mainly just mortgages, but for a lot of people it's car loans and student loans. Make sure that your debt payments never exceed 36% of your gross income because once you get to more of that, you get to a point where if you were to lose a portion of your income, you're gonna be in trouble and you're not gonna be able to pay back those debts. So uh, if you're making, um, I don't know, $100,000 a year, um, make sure that your debts don't exceed $36,000 a year. And I think the ideal is somewhere around 28%. So around $28,000 a year if you make $100,000 a year. So yeah, just make sure you don't take out too much debt based on your income. We're gonna move on, but although good debt is a little bit different, if you're using it for investments, you can do a little bit more. Uh, but again, a lot of, most people don't know how to use good debt. So we're gonna move on to number six here. Number six is pretty much what I was just mentioning. Don't get bad debt. And again, it's just what I mentioned before. Don't get back on your credit cards. Don't take out student loans. Don't get payday loans. There's ways to avoid that stuff. Have an emergency fund. Um, I mean, student loans can be a good investment. It just depends. I made a whole separate video on that. But yeah, just don't take out bad debt. Don't take out debt where you can't see, your, you can't see that debt producing more wealth for you in the future than what you took out for as debt. So for example, if you're taking out a $80,000 student loan, make sure that it is because you're gonna get a job that in the next 20 years will pay you over the next 20 years at least $80,000 more than if you didn't get that degree, than if you didn't take out that debt. So do the math on a lot of that stuff. Uh, just Don't go bad debt, make sure your debt is an investment of some sort. If you get a mortgage on a single family home, I consider that neutral. 
Um, I mean, it can be bad in some cases and it can be good in some cases. So mortgages, they're kind of neutral, but it's not necessarily bad in all cases. We're going to move on to number seven here. What's bad in all cases is car loans. Those are bad in all cases. Same with payday loans. Bad in all cases. Unless you need the loans to like for medical stuff to keep you alive, but they're usually bad. So we're going to move on here. What's number seven? Good credit. I wouldn't say that you need good credit to be financially healthy depending on your lifestyle. I mean, if you want to take out a mortgage, you're going to need good credit. But um, and if you want credit cards, I know that a lot of people, they just use cash their entire lives, which is okay. If you make enough money, you don't need a good credit. But I, I think that a lot of people, yeah, most people would need some sort of good credit. So again, we're going back to some of these other tips here. Pay your stuff on time. Pay back, pay back your debts on time. Don't take out too much bad debt. And yeah, just make sure your creditors are happy. And try. there's other ways to increase your credit. So it's paying back stuff on time, increasing your income, um, being at a stable job, people like to see that for some reason. Uh, there's lots of things you can do. Uh, make sure you don't take out too many credit cards too quickly. And yeah, that's it. I mean, my credit score is 800 and I'm 23 years old. Mine should be, but I think the average is what, 680 something for someone my age. So just pay back stuff on time, get good credit. That means that you'll be uh, financially healthy. We're gonna move on to number eight here. Again, a lot of these are important. They had, this was a pretty good article that, this, uh, that was from the Toronto Star. Which, uh, this one was, insure your house, vehicle, and potentially your life, if you really care about that. Um, if you really care about your family, I mean, and people dependent on you. So get insurance. You never know what could happen. Uh, if your car breaks down and you need your car for work um, and you don't have insurance, I don't know, can you go to jail for that in the States? I think you can go to jail if you don't have car insurance in Canada. So just make sure you're insured. Make sure your house is insured. You don't, you know, never know if something can burn down. Uh, if your $500,000 house burns down and you don't have insurance, you're not getting any money back. But I told this, told the story recently of my grandma. Her basement got flooded, uh, which caused thousands of dollars in damages, but insurance covered all of it. Covered all the expenses and she didn't lose that thousands of dollars worth of assets. And she was able to sell her home. We, we were able to sell her home eventually because we fixed it up. So get insurance, whether it's on something valuable you purchase, um, whether it's on some sort of business or maybe you're loaning out money to someone else, just make sure you have some sort of insurance so that if whatever reason that asset burns down or your, that income stream burns out, that you, have at, you get at least some sort of kickback in return. So I think that's gonna wrap up this video. Do you have any uh, other tips for you to become financially healthy? This is just what they said in the article. I agree with them. This is what uh, most people should follow, the average person should follow. So I'd like to thank you very much for watching. You're all very beautiful people. I'll see you guys in the next video.